Welcome to I Rock Business with Confidence, the podcast where passion meets profit without the pressure of a big price tag. I'm your host, Corey Fonville Foster, transformational speaker, certified business coach, trainer, and the CEO behind the mic. In every episode, we dive deep into the heart of entrepreneurship, bringing you stories, strategies, and tips to monetize your passions while maintaining your budget. Whether you're a budding entrepreneur or looking to scale up, this is your go-to resource for affordable sales and marketing strategies. Join us as we interview small business experts from around the globe, sharing their journeys, challenges, and the solutions that propelled them to success. I Rock Business with Confidence podcast is here to demystify the process of running a successful business on a budget. Get ready to transform your entrepreneurial dreams into reality, one episode at a time. Hi guys, welcome back to the I Rock Business with Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Corey Bonville Foster, and I'm so excited to be back with you for another engaging episode full of implementation for amazing entrepreneurs just like yourselves. As always, we have an amazing guest lined up for you, and I'm really excited about this guest because I've actually been able to be in her presence, and she is just a ball of personality. Um, She's been in the game for over 40 plus years, guys. She's not new to this. She is definitely true to this. A little bit about her, she is a world-renowned speaker, international best-selling author, a leadership coach, and she teaches leaders the principles of agile change leadership to increase adoption, retain talent, and build high-performing teams using her proprietary Victor framework. I am talking about none other than, drumroll please, (laughs) my friend Yvette Owens. Welcome to the podcast. (laughs) Thank you so much. And thank you, thank you, thank you. It's great to be here. Awesome. I'm glad I got you up here. I've actually been wanting to connect with you for a while. It's like when we got to meet, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to find a way to work with this lady. I've been stalking her a little bit on LinkedIn. Um, And I'm just so excited that we got to get you up here because I knew there was a way that our paths would cross. I know you focus mostly on leadership, but my philosophy is in order to be a great entrepreneur, you have to be a great leader, whether you have a team or not, because you have to be able to lead yourself (laughs) if no one else. And so today we're going to be deep dive diving into all things leadership. Uh, But before we dive into the topic, I just want to give you an opportunity to just introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do as an entrepreneur. Great. So again, thank you for the invite. And um, I, the first time we met in that room, as we were crossing over into a new adventure, um, we definitely connected. And so I'm so glad to be here and to serve you and your audience. Um, I cannot agree even any more than what you've already said about the fact that entrepreneurs are leaders in this space. And I um, often um, talk about the fact that we can't just do business, but we have to be business. And in order to be business, we have to lead the business. Um, so where I help is leaders to continue to strengthen that muscle because it is a muscle that you have to um, learn because we can get so bogged down in the minutia and not that it's not meaningful work, but we have to always have a mindset that I'm leading this organization to where my vision sees it going. And uh, so I work with organizations, I work with corporate, and I actually approach the leadership spectrum or pendulum, if you will, on two sides. I work with those who are seasoned and senior leaders or emerging leaders to make sure that they continue to build that muscle of leadership so they're effective, not only in producing the services and products that they want to get out into the industry, but also helping to nurture those people who are along the journey with them, because we can't forget them and we can't abuse them. And we have to know that we're leading the whole thing. And how do we make sure we keep everything in harmony and balance, right? And then there's also the students who we know are growing up and what better opportunity to sow into them now so they grow up with healthy leadership skills 
um, so that they create environments even where they are now and it just becomes second nature to them to create thriving environments for everyone. So my goal is to touch 11, uh, more, 1 million leaders globally because for every leader that I touch, there's at least a dozen or more leaders that are they gonna t they're, they're gonna touch. And so it's very, I believe it's a very viable goal. Um, and I want to see this. This is a transformation that I wanna see in leadership, that we sound different, we look different, and we leave people feeling different. And that's what I'm looking for in leadership. I love that. And I love how you describe leadership as like this muscle because I've been around people who are like, you're born a leader. And then I have other people who are like, there's no, there's no such thing. You know, you have to create leaders. But I think it's a, a combination of both. Some people have that leadership uh, charisma, right? They have some of the skills that make a good leader. But whether they start off in that area or not, it's so important to always be first started off having to be in leadership positions, I, I was horrible. <laughs> I was horrible. It wasn't that I wasn't seen as a leader. I kept getting stuck in leadership positions, but I wasn't a great leader. And it wasn't until I realized that I had to learn how to be the leader my audience needed um, at the time that I started to really like work on those muscles and build that, that aptitude in leadership. Now, I do want to ask you because I know for me, I, I come as an entrepreneur in one way, so I have a certain viewpoint, but what made you um, start your business? I, I, I'm like, what, what fueled this uh, leadership passion that you had? Did you have a whole bunch of bad leaders <laughs> that you had to work under? What happened to make you think, <laughs> um, I need to help these people? Yeah, so I have had the opportunity to be on both sides, all sides of leadership. And I think when you find yourself in a pattern and there's a thread for all of us that goes through our lives that leads us to our purpose and our destiny, right? So I was raised in a family of leaders who were very nurturing, but you know, strong at the same time and guided us through. And so I saw what good leadership looked like and felt like as I was growing up. But then I went into corporate and I did not find that to be consistent throughout my career. And um, I'll say that diplomatically. Um, so um, yeah, I've had my share of bad leaders. I've had my share of leaders who started out uh, appearing to be having my best interest at heart, but when their interests started to become stronger than mine, then I was in no, I was no longer the priority. Um, so while I had, I had to learn the balance of respecting my leaders, but yet still maintaining ownership for my own leadership, my own purpose and my own destiny. And honestly, when I first started in corporate, um, in my career, I put too much stock in the people who were leading me to trust them to take care of me because again, of my upbringing around strong leaders. Right. But I found out that mm, that's, that's not the norm. <laughs> reality, not. <laughs> reality check. Let's get this together. And now you have to figure out how to balance that. How to get what you need from your leaders in a respectful way. I don't mean like take advantage of, but every person that I come in contact with, I believe has something for me. And I also have something to pour out into them as well. And when I once I did that mind shift, then I knew that other people needed to learn that too, so they could have a choice. And when I speak to groups about developing effective leadership, I always include a slide or a part of that conversation that talks about because of my core values, because of my skills, because of my knowledge, because of my experiences, because of my good character, I have choices. And so as every individual, we need to make sure those things are in place so we never lose our choice. I love that. And it's, it's so funny because as you were talking, I'm picturing all the leaders in my mind. I'm like, oh, well, that one's good, but I, <laughs> and, and I feel like they teach you something, right? They teach you what not to do. They teach you something that you can, you know, take away and then use for your future. Um, so it's always a learning opportunity, but sometimes it's not fun um, having to deal with people who are in leadership positions. I don't even like calling them leaders, but people who are in leadership positions who are not yet equipped with the skills and the knowledge and the tools to be effective leaders. And I think that kind of goes to my next question because one of the trademark things that I've seen and people who I really love as leaders is the understanding that they have their own vision. 
um, for for where they want to go, where they what they want to accomplish, where where they want their team to go, and then they not only know it for themselves but they share it. So, in your opinion, what does it mean to be like a vision led leader? It means for me that you absolutely are clear on what that vision is. You're absolutely clear on what it encompasses, but you open. You're open to other people showing you how to get there. We often talk about, especially in agile change leadership and what the whole agile change leadership is about being flexible and being able to maintain what you have to keep going, what needs to keep running the business and how, you know, you might have projects already underway, but now you bring in, you come in and you insert something new. How does that impact what's already in the play in play right um and how do you flex that in how do you flex your style right so um to answer your question ask me your question again <laughs> that's like look, she was giving us all the tea i was talking about um being a vision-led leader but you kind of right. touched on that because you were saying like they know what their right. vision is which is which is uh, important and i also want to ask too because i think you kind of answered the question i already asked but you mentioned the word agile leadership and that's not a term that i've actually um been familiar with so you you mentioned like flexibility what does it mean to be an agile leader yeah so it came out of technology um for um originally that's where if you mention agile change leadership a lot of people automatically go to technology projects and technology organization which means that i'm able to deliver the most viable product or service at any given time i'm not waiting till all the i's are dotted, all the t's are crossed but i know what's that minimal viable product that i need to deliver and then i keep building and i keep growing on it so i'm not waiting till the whole table is set <laughs> right yes. i'm making i'm making sure that oh Again, that's where that clear vision needs to be in place. And where I was, what the other point I wanted to make was the how piece. Mm -hmm. The beauty of your team and the people around you is you set a clear direction of this is what I'm looking for. This is where I'm hoping to end up. This is the problem that I want to solve for. And now you invite your team to say, okay, well, how can we get there knowing what we know about our organization already? And that's what Agile helps to do. Um, it helps to flex and be able to put those things in place. It could be changes in your workflow. It could be changes in a process. It could be changes in your product. You wanna do something different with your product. It could be changes in your marketing strategy, right? Um, but how do you do that and still keep things alive but know that we're going to make this change this measurable change because we think it's going to improve things but we are still have in sight all the other things that we have running and we might need we might know that oh i can keep this one but now that i'm introducing this new thing i don't need this thing that we were working on anymore and so it's to be very flexible and be willing to um as we say, fail, fail forward. Yes. Um, and fail fast. Um, and so you're not afraid of those. You're not afraid of the resistance. You're not afraid of doing, going after it. Yeah, I think a lot of people, especially new to entrepreneurship, are afraid of that F word, that failure. But it's really a matter of perspective because the quicker you can get to the failure, at least this is what entrepreneurs who are successful know, the quicker you can get to the quote unquote failure, the quicker you can get to the solution. Um, if you're sitting around waiting for things, like you said, to be perfect, oftentimes you're not even able to test the product. You're not able to see if it's going to work. You're just like, oh, I don't think it's ready yet. And while you're waiting, somebody else is developing something that's going to compete with it. Somebody else is out here making money and you're sitting here like, why am I not successful? Because you're waiting versus, like you said, being flexible, being willing to possibly fail. And if you do fail, great. Now you have data to make the corrections needed to move forward into success. And so I love that idea of being agile, being flexible, and not waiting for that perfect moment, that perfect time. Because I'm gonna be honest, perfect just never comes. <laughs> it just never comes. If you're not constantly looking at your products, your services, your audience, and fine tuning your processes, 
all over in operations, sales, marketing, and any and all the rest, you are really not going to be able to stay afloat as an entrepreneur. The best entrepreneurs are always trying to be innovative. They're always trying to see what the trends are and what's going on in the industry and how they can do better within themselves to do better for their audience. Um, something I do want to talk to talk about because I think this is an important component of leadership is communication. Um, we talked about, you know, people having good leaders and bad leaders, um, upper, you know, situations they found themselves in. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with communication, because even if you know the skills, <laughs> sometimes you can't communicate effectively um, those skills so that they are able to be incorporated into the leadership opportunities you have. So how does being an authentic communicator aid you in your leadership goals? So this is, uh, as you were talking, I was, that came to mind to help entrepreneurs really, this concept of agile change and leadership really resonate with them. We're all trying to get our message out there, right? But sometimes we're afraid to get our message out there. We haven't pushed the go button because it's like, oh, what if people don't like what I'm saying? What if they don't respond? We never know what will click with our audience. And sometimes when we're starting as entrepreneurs, we don't even know who our audience really is until we start getting our message out there. And so being agile and not being afraid to change as we go along is something that we can all uh, really understand when it comes to getting our message out there. So start somewhere and do that message. Now, authenticity is what we need to lead with to differentiate ourselves from the next entrepreneur. We're both helping people in business, right? But you're definitely and very speaking to entrepreneurs. I'm speaking to the leader in entrepreneurs, corporate people, executives and things like that. So because we've niched down enough to be really authentic in how I we, we want to help individuals that seem to be in the same space. Now we can go after that message in our most authentic voice. And I that is important because somewhere along the line, we learned another voice. We learned the voices that were around us. We learned the voices that people we saw in these spaces and we've heard them. And now we knowingly or unknowingly start to mimic them. We have to get down to what does this really mean for me? So that when someone asks you the question, why are you doing this business? You're not going to sound like another baker or you're not going to sound like another makeup artist or you're not you're going to be able to really express yourself for what this means to you and how you feel you can change the world because that's your assignment we've all come to impact and influence the world for the better and i can only do that you can only do that we can only do that when we own our voice all of it our yeah. whole self and we come full force with our whole self. That's why it's important because we can't sound like each other because then people don't know when to choose me or you. You're so right. And I think that it's hard, especially when you're getting started because you are trying to find that voice and you're also looking to see, okay, well, who's doing this thing that I'm trying to do well? And you're like, okay, I like that. And people seem to like that. So then you try to mimic it and then you're wondering why you're not having success. And it's like, cause it isn't authentic to you. It's not who you truly are. So people, even if they don't know why they don't want to deal with you, they're like, hmm, something over there just doesn't seem just right. Like, uh, I, I, I kind of like her, but it seems like this is not real. It seems like there's something off. And, and people perceive that. They can perceive it through a computer screen, through a phone, um, and definitely in person. So it is so important to be you. I know when I started my business, I was a little, my, my coach told me I was a little too me. I was like, I want to be the girl next door. I would do videos and a shower cap, pajamas, whatever. And she was like, all right, now you can be you, but you know, <laughs> elevate a little bit. And it took me a while. And now I'm happy because I can be you know, a mom and a, and a homeschool mom and an entrepreneur and a wife. Um, and I can be all those things to my audience because I am me versus having to pretend that I'm jet setting every day. Cause I realize I don't want to jet set every day, <laughs> whether I got the money or not. So I don't, I don't pretend or put on that facade. So I love how you talked about really just showing up as you, because it differentiates who 
is for you. And I think that just kind of getting out of that scarcity mindset thinking, well, if I don't act like this, nobody's going to come to me. Actually, who's for you will be for you. Absolutely. And and then you're able to still be successful. And then you, you can just be you every day, which is great. Like, Absolutely. you know, wake up and put on your own face <laughs> every day. Is, as a leader, the people who come on your team, they will stay with you when they know the real you. Yes. If I don't know who's going to show up the next morning or in the next hour, then I'm going to be very uncomfortable working with you, right? Mm -hmm. But if I know that you're showing up in every situation and you are consistent in how you show up in the good, the bad, and the ugly, when we run into trouble and when we don't, where there's an issue and where we're celebrating, and I know I can trust you to show up as you, then I can be comfortable and do the same because yeah. so we as when as we lead ourselves in the most authentic way we can we give other people permission to do the same thing we really do and so whether you have employees or whether you have vendors that you're working with every you're leading a business you're leading an effort you're leading a ministry you're leading a community movement people who and you interact with need to know that you are showing up and they know then they know what to expect from you and they know what to bring you yes that makes perfect sense and, and kind of getting back into like what makes you different one thing that i recommend to my clients all the time is having their own framework right something to set them apart and i love i was leaning over the notes you sent before we got on our call and i was like okay she got a proprietary framework we definitely don't <laughs> talk about that because um, not only, like, I already know you're amazing, but now I'm like, okay, she's amazing. And she has a framework that can support this amazing information that she's giving. So let's talk a little bit about your proprietary framework, the Victor framework. What does it mean and how do you implement it? So, um, it means Victor is for vision, innovation, um, collaboration, transformation, ownership, and resilience. And so remember, I'm always going about um, leading from a perspective of training leaders, the agile change leadership principles, because when we can really manage and lead change well, we can lead the day to day well, because there's always going to be some change. So that's why I focus there, because it's in those critical moments where people feel less sure of what's happening in an organization. Right. It's like, am I going to be impacted by this or not? how how is this going to change what i did yesterday or the last hour um and if and a lot of times people are the last thought so i i share this through if i'm working if i'm coaching a group of leaders then i hope i focus on the fact that we must always focus on vision performance how is the vision performing how do we monitor it how do we measure it how do we set out to do that how do we even know it's the right thing? Have we included the right voices at the table, even while we're strategizing what the vision should be so that implementation becomes easier? And then once we have a solid vision, then as I mentioned earlier, we open it up to the team or the right people to innovate about how we're gonna do this. As a leader, I should be flexible most in the innovation piece because I have smart people around me. Don't bring people on your team who are not smart. You want people who are smarter than you on your team so that you get the greater because the greater of the sum of you all is going to take you to a place you never even imagined. And then you'll see the collaboration happening. Collaboration only happens when people trust one another. The, high, the greater level of trust, the greater level of co collaboration. And so I help leaders and their teams really increase that level of collaboration. How can we get to a higher degree of trust in one another? Uh, which also gets back to your point on communication, right? And then you'll start to see that transformation. Now you can be intentional and you should be about the transformation you want to see. And that should be defined up in front with the strategy. Not only what do you want to do, but what are the behaviors that you want to see in your organization as a result of implementing this strategy? And then once that's in place, 
you'll find that people start to take ownership because you've involved them, they're engaged, and now your organization has a greater sense of resiliency. The winds and the storms may come, they may blow, but you guys are gonna still be there. You're gonna be able to respond quickly, be agile. I love that, look at that, y'all. I hope y'all was writing it down. Because like, I know I'm going to take some notes later. I was like, that was a word right there. And I, and I like because it puts it in perspective. And it also, each step builds on the other, which right. I like. Because if you start at the V and go all the way to the R, it's like, okay, you really can put, you know, the framework of the pieces together to effectively lead. And again, I know some of you may be listening to this or watching and saying, well, it's just me, myself, and I. But every time you talk about your business, every time that you try to find someone to collaborate with every time when maybe you're thinking about grabbing a va or getting an intern and when you're trying to scale and you do build your team you are having to lead um all those conversations you're sitting having with yourself you're leading yourself you're saying okay what is our vision what are we doing how are we implementing how are we staying flexible how are we staying resilient all of those things you are doing so i want you to to see yourself in this framework you really understand that leadership is just so important to the success of your business now something that i like talking about on this podcast because we always say what to do um but we also don't talk uh, i think we don't talk enough in the industry period about challenges that we face right we talked a little bit about failure earlier or the i like to put it, the perception of failure um but when you've been working with your clients or or what you've seen in the industry what are like three common challenges or um things or struggles that people are having when it comes to leadership, especially in the realm of entrepreneurship. So I'm going to make this very personal because I think it's those stories that help people. So I'm not going to tell you about somebody else's story. I'm going to tell you about mine. And some of the major challenges is, so we, you mentioned, and I'm glad you did about the collaboration, even though I am the I was a sole person in my organization. I still had to talk to other people. I didn't know everything I needed to know. I couldn't do, nor did I want to do, everything that needed to be done in this organization. Um, so I had to reach out to people. Um, one of the greatest lessons we can do is learn how to reach out to the right people and to discern who those right people are. Um, I can tell you that I've lost money, great sums of money, by not reaching out to the, trusting the wrong people. So don't just buy into the hype, investigate, 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 talk it over to some trusted resources, some trusted people in your life who have an understanding of what you're doing. And I'm saying that because we can talk to some people in our life that we trust, but they have no clue where you're going and they yes. don't desire. And because they don't have a clue, they don't want you to go there either big and, and out of their heart to protect you. So there's, they'll tell you, Oh, you're doing too much. Oh, you can, you know, you need to do No, that's not who you want to talk to. You need to talk to people who have vision and who are doing that. So, um, really trusting the right people. One, two is, don't go after all the shiny and glitzy stuff. So there's this new thing, this new platform, but, but have you secured a mastery around the skill sets that you have learned? Have you really grown in the area that you just learned what to do, right? Don't pace yourself. This is your journey. I had to learn that. And and everybody who's going to say, there's going to be people say, oh, you need to do this. You need to do that. And you're going to be so hungry to get to where you want to go that you're going to be grabbing at everything and haven't implemented anything. Again, back to change leadership, right? I can have a vision and a strategy, but unless it's implemented and reinforced and I can see that it's working, I just have a strategy. And I can tell you that I worked with a client, um, which is a government client very high level government client. And one of the things that those people were telling me in the workshop was they don't pay attention to the strategies. Why? Because they know they're gonna get another, leadership was turning over all the time. And so a new leader would come in and they would get a new strategy. And so it was happening so frequently, they ignored the strategies and they kept doing what they knew to do. 
So you don't want to take the time of building a strategy and you really believe in it and people not paying attention to it because you're getting ready to change it the next moment. Figure out where you need to anchor your start, get started in that, master it, and then move on and, and figure out what you need to pick up. And then thirdly, I would say, trust you. Don't let anybody define who you are. Identity is key. And I know best who I am, what I need to do, where I need to go. Nobody else does. Um, I can take in information, but as a leader, you're always making the informed decision, not a decision that somebody else causes you to make. Yes, that was a word right there. I was sitting here, like, I'm not going to mention them names, but I got a few clients on the <laughs> roster and previous clients that need to hear that. Because, yes, stop going out here buying everything because somebody said you should. You done bought all this software, don't know how to use it at all. Like, you done wasted your money. Stop going out here investing in this coach and that program, and you haven't even decided what the true vision and mission is for your business. Like, y'all stop it. Because then what happens is, you know how they call it, like, church hurt? I feel like you get coach hurt because you done invested and you go to the next person and say, well, I tried this in the past. I invested in all the software. I invested in all the programs and it didn't work. That's because you was out here just jumping the gun. You didn't, you weren't clear on who you are as a business owner. You weren't clear in how you want your business to go. Your vision was scattered all over the place and you were just jumping from idea to idea. It, plenty of people are great coaches and plenty of software works. However, it has to be the right thing for you at the right time that also completes your vision. Like you've been talking about this whole time, what you have to know where you want to go first and then you find the pieces and the people to support you. And I love how you said, can't be out here asking just anybody for advice. <laughs> I used to do that too. I used to be like asking my family and friends and stuff. And they're like, girl, you you trying to spend how much on what? And it's like, yeah, they don't even know. They have no concept. And they're not trying to be, you know, they're not trying to come out of the spirit of malice. They right. just, they don't know. Um, and they're not immersed. They have no, they have no foundation of understanding to really give you um, informed advice or information. So you... You were just, I was like, yes, yes, to everything you said, because it was so, so true. And I think that if you take nothing else from this, this episode, just going back to what we said in the beginning, being very clear on your vision, because if I you want, have want, it, go I'm ahead, sorry. go ahead, jump in, jump in. I, ju I just want to add, because you triggered something for me. So there's three eyes. If you t listen to what um, Corey said, three eyes, idea, installation, implementation all very three things whatever you decide to go after wherever you decide to start make sure you take it from idea installation to installation and then implementation if you can look at whatever you started and you've done all three of those then you are in a good a good place but as Corey said we start with idea and then we go to the next idea and we've never installed it we never implement it because implementation means I can go back and see if I'm doing it really well. Where do I need to change? Who do I need to bring in to start doing it so that I can do something else? All that kind of stuff. So the three eyes: idea, installation, implementation. Yes. Everybody who knows me knows implementation is my favorite word. <laughs> like get it done because, yeah, if you haven't implemented it, you don't have data, you don't have um, any information to move forward and you're just sitting there with a thought, with an idea. So definitely implementation is my favorite. So I'm look, I'm looking at the time we're drawing to a close. However, a little birdie told me that you have an amazing leadership community on the book of faces. So I did want to let you talk a little bit about um, your, what is it? InterSoul, am I saying it right? Yeah. InterSoul Leadership Facebook community. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's a group of leaders who come together who are, many are entrepreneurs, um, but also some are also in, um, corporate spaces, working for executives, working for other people um, who really are, are gaining their voice back or want to maintain their voice as leaders. And they're helping us to change the tapestry of what leadership looks like. And so we come together, we share ideas, we help each other build on ideas um, to build out their, their ideas or thoughts or 
on leading, on how do I attack this from a leadership perspective? How do I represent my organization well when I'm trying to bring this idea to a group that I'm trying to influence to either um, fund us or to buy into this idea? And um, I can, so like one person is out of Kentucky and she's um, helping with a coalition around education. So how we often talk about how does she influence governmental organizations around their area or school system or school districts or other people that can feed into her movement. Um, so it's those kind of things that we are talking about, but it's really get, giving those leadership a place to gain their voice, to be authentic in the leadership space. How do I deal with that difficult situation? We, we can banter, we can talk about those things and give guidance. Um, Cause that's one of my sweet spots. Cause that we don't necessarily teach those things when we're in business school or we, you know, you don't learn it until you run into it. Right. Mm -hmm. But we've created this safe space where what happens when, or how do you avoid it? If um, you have this difficult scenario that could be very sensitive, how do you become a diplomat? So we, again, we share ideas. Um, it is a membership group. Right now, we're still taking members in at the founders rate of $47 a month. Um, and um, we, again, they get discounts on events that we're having, additional anthologies or books that we present. Um, they get highlighted in magazines and things that we have. So it's, it's a really powerful group. But again, it's our way of helping to change how leaders look, sound, and leave people feeling. Oh, amazing. And guys, not only will you have a link to um, connect with Yvette and join that amazing community of the best leaders in the business, but you will also have links to um, connect with her via her website, her Facebook, her Instagram, and her YouTube channel. Um, before we go, do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave our audience with? Um, what I've been feeling lately is that I want you to dream again. And that's what I've been leading with my audiences. Wherever you are now, continue to dream big with the parameters that we've outlined, you know, an idea, install, implement, but get those dreams down and go for it because I think it's a really good time. It, time is now for us to be in the right place, doing the right thing in the right way with the right people for the right reasons. And if that's you, we need you to show up and show up big. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad we finally were able to collaborate um, and do some amazing work. I know this is just the beginning of, of our, our, our journey together, um, but definitely thank you so much for being here and being part of the podcast and giving such great, valuable information and insight into the world of leadership. Um, for those of you who are watching and listening, thank you so much for being here. Remember to like, follow, and share. And also let us know um, what other topics you want us to cover because we are in the midst of preparing for our next season. And I want to ensure that we are giving you the type of implementation information that you need to move your business forward. But until next time, we will talk to you soon. And remember, I rock, you rock, we all rock. Next time. And that's a wrap on another episode of I Rock Business with Confidence podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining our journey into the world of entrepreneurship. If today's episode inspired you or just gave you the tools to tackle your next business challenge, we'd love your support. Please like, share, follow, subscribe, and rate us with a glowing five stars. And don't forget to leave us a review. Are you an entrepreneur with a unique perspective, expertise, or actionable strategies that our audience can implement today to advance their entrepreneurial journey? We're always on the lookout for guests who are ready to share their stories and insights. If that's you, please reach out to us. Remember, entrepreneurship isn't just about the destination. It's about the journey. And here at I Rock Business with Confidence, we're here to journey with you. Until next time, Keep rocking your business with confidence. We can't wait to see where your entrepreneurship journey takes you.